I just I love how like uh, Naples isn't like one busy area. It seems to just go on. Like it's just little nooks and little spaces, and everyone's got their own little little thing. It's like you go to a tourist attraction in North America, and it's like they really make one tourist attraction dominates everything and becomes this huge thing. Whereas here, it's like every little alleyway has you know, 40 different things going on in it. It's really cool. Everywhere you turn, there's something. So it's nice because there's like a lot of tiny little tourist attractions, a lot of tiny little things to see, not just like free big things or something like that. Our last major stop of this trip into uh, Naples was the Bourbon Tunnel. Uh, a really, really cool space. I mean, like, it, it's got a long, long history. Um, started as the aqueducts and the cisterns of uh, Naples, and then it has a rich history during the Neapolitan Kingdom, and then, of course, it had uh, a long history during World War II as a bomb shelter. It's really the garbage can at the bottom of the city that has collected the history over the last several hundred years. And uh, it's really, really cool. We couldn't film a lot of it because it's such a new attraction. They didn't want cameras down there. But uh, man, I definitely, definitely suggest going and check it out. It's really, really neat. So you're saying the last eruption was 1944. Really? Yeah. She said 17th century. Clearly I listened well. I'm pretty sure she said 1944. <laughs> oh, wasn't that long ago? When was Pompeii though? You know, 19... Well, then again, Allied troops are still bombing this place, so... It must have been weird. So, Kim was saying that if uh, there's supposed to be another eruption, of this volcano anytime now and uh, the whole city has an evacuation plan and even where they are even though it's it's pretty far away right like an hour's drive an hour's drive they have an evacuation policy to or like meeting spot um and she was saying that right now their biggest worry is not even the volcanic eruption but that the earthquakes leading up to it might cause a tsunami but they live way up on top of a hill, so they'd probably be okay. But they'd be stuck there, that's what she was saying, right? Yeah. They'd be stuck there. How are you feeling, Shelby? I think it's the part of the stretch that they said wasn't so steep. They lied. They lied to us. I think once we get in the van, we should make a renewed commitment to Shelby and Simon Fitness. Nope. It's just because the air is thin up here. That's the only reason yeah. why. I'm yeah. And yeah, because I have to lug up 255 pounds of man fat. It's your typical Italian parking job. We're climbing up the side of the mountain. And there he is. He's like, yeah, that's a good spot. Right there. On the side of a volcano. Thousands of feet above the city. Uh, whoa. Here we go. Okay, without any information, we believe that might be Pompeii, but we have no idea. So we'll find out in a minute. It's impressive. Oh, got a parking spot for camp uh, for Pompeii. Check out all these campers. Very nice. Maybe we were supposed to pay for this. I don't know. 
No one was there. The origins of the city are uncertain. The oldest reports date from the end of the 7th and the first half of the 6th century BC when the first ring of tufa walls called Hapa Monte was built around an area of 63.5 HA hectares. hectares. Sorry, I'm out of breath from climbing. <laughs> Let's